Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today I came down to Lake Eden to do a bit of a wildlife photo shoot. This is not far from my place and if you don't know where Lake Eden is, it's only around five minutes from the huge Westfield shopping centre at North Lakes. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can find this lake. And this place is great, not just for wildlife, but for exercise. It's a very easy walk around this lake. But I come down here quite often, either by myself or with my family and my daughter. We just love walking around this lake because there's so much wildlife to see. Now, my main purpose for coming today was I was hoping to get a bit of video of the local black swans nesting. So I was hoping to get an interaction between the male and female swan when they're on the nest. Dad swan, he's flown the coop. I don't know where he is, but I did take quite a few photos. I took some photos of grebs and I'll put some of these photos up here now that you can see. And one thing that really surprised me, and for, this is why I like wildlife photography so much, is that you really never know what you're going to photograph. We have the common crows around here, and people class them as pests. They make a lot of noise. They raid birds' nests and all that. But today, I photographed, and I'll show you a photo here of it now. Take a look at this. This is a crow feeding on the ground through some shrubbery on the ground looking for worms. I've never seen a crow do that. I've walked away with something that I'd never seen before. And this to me is the beauty about wildlife photography. And when you come photographing an area, even if you've been there hundreds of times like I've been here, you've got to come with an anticipation of saying, well, I'm just going to go for a walk, but I might get the unexpected photo. And for me, although it's just a crow feeding on the ground. This was very unexpected because crows are very skittish. You can't approach crows, and especially when you zoom out like this, they look at this like a gun. You point this to a crow, most of the time they'll just fly off so quickly. Another thing here that I want to show people is that when we're photographing wildlife, a lot of people say, just use the minimum shutter speed for what you need. Because I shoot in manual mode, I set my aperture, f5.6 i shoot f5.6 on this nikon 200 to 500 mil lens wide open all the time it's set f5.6 i set my shutter speed for what i want and then the iso is set to auto that way the iso balances out my exposure so i set if the bird isn't moving let's say there's a duck there i can see some ducks in on the side here they're not moving they're just resting having a sleep i can just shoot them at 1 400th or 1 500th of a second. No problem at all, I'll get a sharp pick. But if I'm watching an uh, egret and the egret looks like it's going to be catching a fish, then I will bump up my shutter speed to 1 2 thousandths of a second. Or if there's ducks flying past, I will crank it up 1 2 thousandths, 1 2 and a half thousandths of 2 and a half thousandths of a second to get those crisp, sharp photos. Take a look at this photo. I've got two photos here. The first one here, the shutter speed, two and a half thousandths of a second. The ISO is 3,200. I quickly just changed the shutter speed to 1,800 because the bird standing still is ISO 900. And you say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the higher the ISO, the less sharp the image is going to get. So you're just adding a little bit of noise to your image that doesn't need to be there. If the bird isn't moving and it's just stationary on a perch, you can shoot easily at 500mm on this lens at 1 500 or 1 640 of a second without a problem at all and your ISO is going to be quite low. But if it's a bird in flight then for me all bets are off. I'm not worried about the ISO. I just want a sharp photo and by a sharp photo I mean look at this. This is two Pacific black docks and they actually did two flybys of the lake like F-18s. They flew twice around and on the second time this is what I got. I was photographing at 1 2,000th of a second, f5.6. The ISO was 4,000. Look at this image. It is so sharp. I'm zooming in. This is amazing. This is just a JPEG. Take a look at the raw file editor. Smackaroos. I am so happy with this. When I saw him go back around the lake, go like quickly, change my settings very quickly. I went from single spot to group focus. So 
I knew I had a better chance of focusing on the ducks. Up the shutter speed to 2,000th of a second. Changed from continuous slow to continuous high. So I'm shooting between 8 to 10 frames a second. And bang, 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 bang. Now you can see some of these, the ducks aren't in there or they're just half in. The ducks were flying so fast that all I could do was just guesstimate how quick they were moving along. And zoomed in at 390 mils, you really don't have much view. You've just got to hope and pray. I call it hope and pray. A lot of people just go spray and pray. You just hold your finger on the trigger. This is why I like back button focusing because I just keep the button pushed down and just continuously just move along with the ducks. That's all you can do when you have fast moving birds like this. Don't expect to get every single photo with the right composition because most of the time, even for myself, I'm very happy if I do like a spray and pray, I take maybe 15 photos. If I've got three or four photos that I can go home and go like, great, I can choose out of those three or four photos, the best photo, share that on social media, share that on my website, then I am really happy about it. And you should be too. So today you say like, yeah, it's overcast. The light's not really good. The light's quite flat. And you go, yeah, I know, the light's quite flat, but still get out there because they say practice makes perfect. The more times you get out there, the better a photographer you will be. When the light is flat like this, this is the time to challenge yourself. Because in great light, easy to take a great photo. In flat light, much harder because things are against you. But in another sense, in flat light, you don't have the very high contrasting images, you know, very bright areas, very dark shadows. So just get out there, whatever the weather, and take some photos. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.